<laughs> That's what I'm talking about, you guys. 3-0 win against West Ham. This was the exact reaction I was hoping for from the match preview where, you know, we were potentially on a three-game losing run. For a club like us, that cannot happen. So today, of course, the pressure was on the players to right all those wrongs, to get a big win in the London derby. And tonight, the players delivered and they performed. Now, you know, let's keep things real. This was not the most exciting or entertaining game of football or the most beautiful game of football we've ever seen. But this game was more important than that. This was about character. And tonight, we showed a ton of character from the top all the way to the bottom. Players like Tammy Abraham. Players like the timeless, the, the beautiful, the amazing, the world-class Thiago Silva. I mean, what a performance this guy put in tonight. When you have players like this that are fighting for the cause, then you get games like this, you get results like this. Tonight, you guys, in today's match for you, I'm going to break down some of the key performances today. I'm going to go through the goals. I'm going to go through the talking points of the games today, plus much more. But before I get into anything, today's video is brought to you by OneFootball, and OneFootball have a very special announcement to make. At this point in time, there is a Boxing Day giveaway where the prize and offer is a football kit of your choice. Now, to enter and have a chance at winning the prize, what you must do is go straight to the description, click on the link, it will take you to the prediction sheet where you follow the on screen information. As you guys can see, two things you need to do. Use the OneFootball app or download the OneFootball app if you don't have it. Of course, a URL link is provided in the prediction sheet. Once you have it, you go to the first article on OneFootball, you copy and paste the headline, you return back to the prediction sheet, fill it into the bar, and as you guys can see, you fill out the relevant information until you get to the prediction part. Now, for my five predictions, as you guys can see, I'm going to be going for a win for us. I mean, it's obvious. Leicester Manchester United, I see that being a draw. Liverpool West Brom, that's an easement for Liverpool. Man City Newcastle, again, guarantee Man City to win. And Wolves vs Spurs, I see this being a 2-2 type of game. So once you do that, you click Terms Conditions, you submit, and there you guys, that was it. You now have an opportunity to win this kit in the prize giveaway. As I said, to enter, go to the description, click on the link, and follow the steps from there. Thanks you guys and good luck. Now, we start the match review starting with the lineup and to be honest, I guess we weren't surprised to not see Reese James taking any part in the game tonight. Let's hope that Reese comes back pretty fit and he's not going to be out for too long because a player like this, one of our key players so far this season, would be a massive loss and miss if he isn't available pretty soon, you guys. So, in step Aspilicueta, we saw another lineup change. We saw Jorginho return back to the team with Kante playing further forward. And I guess Lampard would have made some Mount and Kante to match the intensity levels of your Declan Rices and your Suchek. So, you know, it made a ton of sense. And I felt like, from a power perspective, we didn't lose that on that battle versus West Ham. You know, West Ham tonight, their game plan was to come big and strong. They wanted to defend very deep and resolute use their low blocks, hopefully pick up some spaces in behind our fullbacks, which we were seen a few times, uh, in particular, Sebastian Haller. A lot of times he was drifting in those areas out wide to uh, you know, be that focal point to bring his teammates into the game. And, and to be honest, that was West Ham's only game plan. Uh, they weren't really as creative too much. They created some opportunities in the wide areas, but mostly I thought they were quite tepid for large parts of this game. But uh, anyway, this game started off crazy. Um, honestly, one of the worst starts you'd possibly want. We have an injury to a player in that period. And the player in question happens to be Ben Chilwell. Now, it's disappointing. I'm hoping he's not going to be out for too long because he's he's been another player that's been one of our most impressive players this season. Uh, with Ben, his intensity down that left-hand side, the quality... He's a clear upgrade to any player we have down that side. And now that we've missed out on Reese James and Ben, how is our backline going to cope in these future games? Uh, you know, when teams are losing out on, you know, two big players in their backline like this and, and then expecting the squad players to come in and step up. You know, uh, if mistakes were to happen, I would maybe possibly sympathise only in the sense that those relationships, those defensive relationships that we've been building throughout the season. They've been one of the key reasons as to why we've been picking up so many clean sheets this season. So I'm hoping that we maintain that same defensive quality now that we don't have our two 
you know, first team fullbacks. But I think now is a good time to speak about some players before I start speaking about the goals. And to start with, I think it's fair to mention Aspilicueta and Emerson. Now, to be honest, I thought that their performances at the start of the game they look slightly rusty. Now, I can sympathise because Emerson, you know, he was brought on for Ben and, you know, he needs some time to acclimatise into the game. So, a few times we saw some mistakes, uh, positional mistakes as they always are with Emerson. But as the game carried on, as we started to revert back into our own half, I felt like Emerson was pretty good defensively. I felt like he was solid. He was going in for those 50-50s. You know, he wasn't leaving as much space in behind and and I felt like maybe Thiago Silva was definitely a massive help down that left-hand side. So, with Aspi, I thought it was the same thing for Aspi. You know, he started the game quite slow a few times and there was this one moment in particular but Declan Rice just absolutely burning for pace down that left-hand side and, you know, a few times we were seeing West Ham targeting their attacks down Aspi's side but, you know, with Aspi, he put in some ridiculous blocks. If you're defending, you want to have a player like Aspin in your back line. You know, he's one of those guys that is constantly in those areas to snuff out danger at any cost. And, and as that game went on, his soldier-like mentality was definitely a plus for the team. His competitive spirit, his ability to get stuck in. And I thought that he was playing some decent football too. So, you know, let's hope that this is a positive sign of things to come because now... We're going to have to rely upon Aspila Cuesta and Emerson. We now move on to the goal, starting with the first one. And to be honest, this was the key goal of the game. And this was scored by the excellent, the world-class Thiago Silva. Now, the goal came at the perfect time, you know, especially against an opposition like West Ham, who, you know, stats show in the first 25 minutes, they played with 15% of the ball. 15%. That sums up exactly what West Ham's game plan was. So to get the first goal, forced West Ham to have to play. It forced them to have to open up, meaning that we could play our game, which we now do under Lampard. You know, we win the game in the first half, and then we look to play counter-attacking football in the second half to pick off teams, reserve our energy, and of course, just, you know, it's the safest way to win games when you're leading. So, so Thiago Silva steps up, and I like how he scored that goal because he kind of withheld his run a bit to just, you know, free up that space for himself. The ball comes perfectly to him, and then it was just an excellent header into the goal. But, you know, I feel like for me, there were some good performances tonight, but I'd have to say that Thiago Silva was my man of the match. And the reason for that was just the class he played with. Uh, it was everything. Defensively, he was perfect. I can't remember one mistake he made. You know, it was the little small details like, you know, when Zuma was out of position at times, sometimes, you know, Silva knew where to go to give Zuma that time to get back into position and then reverting back to his original position. You know, things like that. Uh, Things like his passing out from the back, that composure. Uh, things like the blocks. You know, how many times does Silva make his body big and open when it comes to blocking these shots? Does it time and time again? And he knows just the perfect position and angle to get into to block these shots coming his way. Um, masterclass from him. One of the best signings by far this season has transformed our has absolutely transformed our defence. Uh, for me, Thiago Silva was the man of the match. And now to move on to another player that I want to speak about, that is Tam Abraham. This is the perfect timing because I can speak about his goals as well as his performance throughout the game tonight. Now, you know, I've always felt like Tammy unfortunately gets a lot of unnecessary criticism. Now, I can kind of understand it to an extent. Fans, you know, we don't like to see players miscontrolling the ball. Poor first touch, you know, terrible dribbling, just a poor show of skill in that sense. But I do think that with Tammy playing his game with his back to goal against very big, strong, physical Prem defenders, you know, it is hard to play with that type of finesse while maintaining your body positioning and thinking about, you know, so many things at the same time. This is why he needs some time. You know, let's not pretend that Tammy has been developed as a target man striker or anything like that. You know, he was always a poacher. That's always been his game. And right now, for me, since he's been playing for us since last season, he's demonstrated that he wants to learn. He wants to improve. He's adding new things to his game. And tonight was the perfect showing of this. Uh, I just thought his support play throughout the game state was excellent. 
Yeah, how many times was he dropping deep at uh, free up spaces for other players? How many times was he drifting right, especially down uh, uh, the right hand side in the second half, where he played an excellent ball from that side to nearly find Timo Werner? You know, Tammy provides a lot to the team, and you know, you have to look at the cause and effects of Tammy's play. And for me, this is why he is a first team player of Giroud, because he gives us those different dimensions. When you're Tammy Abraham, is it any surprise why Werner and Pulisic especially were able to move more century today, were able to play off them, were able to make runs of behind from those areas? And that's because Tammy provides more ingenuity and more mobility in the final third. So it was great for him to get his two goals. Uh, again, this guy's a goal scorer. But I really feel like people need to give him some patience because he's going to be one of these guys that in the next few years he's really going to blow up I'm absolutely sure of that and tonight Tammy put in a very very good performance now we're approaching the end of the match review of course I have a few more talking points to get through and I have to speak about some of the disappointing performance from tonight they were Jorginho and I have to say maybe Timo Werner now signed with Jorginho I tweeted it earlier was it any surprise that once he went off, we then got two goals and we looked a lot better? Adam Ngoro can say that was bypassing the West Ham midfield, that was finding spaces in behind them to just progress our play and we played a lot quicker and a lot faster. One of the main reasons as to why Jorginho can really slow our play down is based on the positions he finds. Now, there was this one classic moment in the second half I saw where Kanse was playing a pass to Jorginho but he didn't play it with too much pace. Now, the reason for that was because Kante wanted Jorginho to obviously come closer towards him instead of standing stationary in his position really far away where, you know, he was getting marked by West Ham players. You know, Kante played that pass short to let Jorginho know, you need to come towards me, man. And, and it's constantly things like this in which Jorginho affects how we start our attacks from deep. You know, yes, I get that when he drops deeper with our back line, making a back three, you know, that can have his tactical merits at times, but it has to be more than that. If you want to play that deep, it means that your passing quality from those areas has to be even sharper, has to be even better. And I just think at times that it just really slows our play down. You know, we want to find those passes between the lines. And I mean, Jorginho is playing in that makeshift back three. The only passes we can really find are to the fullbacks who normally get out man by the opposition or whenever players like your Kante's or Mason Mounts drops a bit deeper to receive the passes and make something happen. That wasn't Jorginho. He didn't bring anything and the only things he did bring were some poor passes giving away dangerous possession in our own half. I'm going to be sympathetic and I'm going to blame some of this performance down to rustiness because he hasn't played as many games, maybe confidence is down too. So I can imagine some of the you know sloppiness tonight. Let's hope we see more from him. And for the second poor performer, I have to say that was Timo Werner. Now, uh, of course, his form is not with him at this point in time. Is this an opportunity to uh, critique him, make that public on social media and bring that confidence down even more when we need him for that crucial game against Arsenal on Boxing Day? I don't think so, you guys. In this game, because Tammy was playing up front, it meant that Werner was able to receive the service he likes, you know, when he's making those late man runs. There was one moment in the first half where no one found him. Excellent position, he would have been thrown on goal and could have been a different story. But there was one from a counter attack, which I feel both Pulisic and Werner played their parts equally to absolutely ruin. Uh, Pulisic, after his great work, you know, I could understand how he could have slightly played that pass backwards to Werner. And at the same time, even though Werner's first touch should have been better, I can understand that he wasn't expected to receive a pass like that, which puts him off with a poor shot in the end. But from that point on, Werner had a few more opportunities and in very good areas, very good situations. And Lampard's going to be thinking to himself, I sign this guy because I know he finds himself in these areas that lots of players don't get into. He has to put that ball in the back of the net. That's what he's made his name on. So... You know, let's give Werner some time. Let's just ha let's have some patience. Let's wait for him to get back to his form. With these positions that he's finding himself in, this tells me that this is a situation he's currently in that he can get through, he can get past, and become a stronger, better player for. Now, of course, that final moment where he could have made it 4-0, hitting the crossbar instead. Ah, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, it's unlucky, but again, I... I 
I'm still liking his movement. I'm still liking certain things. And uh, as I keep saying, Werner is also another player who's a work in progress who will only get better as the years go on. But anyway, you guys, this was the perfect reaction. Great 3-0 win. Uh, Declan Rice wasn't the star of the show tonight. And that was what I wanted to see. I did not want this game to be about Declan Rice whatsoever. I wanted this game to be about a win for us. We got that tonight, you guys. And on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. Thank you for watching. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.